modern sperm whale is a magnificent animal, celebrated and feared in our myths and literature. Nature reports a major new discovery in Peru of one of its ancestors' fossilized remains, an ancestor much more fearsome than the creature we know today. This part of the Peruvian coast, about 500 kilometers south of Lima, is probably the richest place in the world for fossil marine mammals. It's a paleontologist's paradise. Christian de Muison from Paris and Olivier Lambert from Brussels found some of their most exciting fossils in Peru. I started working in Peru in those localities of marine mammals and the coast of Peru in 76. So it's about 36 years ago exactly. I told Olivier, go to Peru with Giovanni and start working. And they did a very good job. They worked very well. They collected a lot of fossils. This area, the, the Pisco Ica Basin, it's on the, the south coast of Peru. It is a, a desertal area and you have very large outcrops in which you find uh, fossils. And so you just need to walk in the desert and look at this kind of little hills that uh, always, most of the time, correspond to the presence of uh, a fossil marine mammal. So it's a fantastic area to study. Every type of whale has its own particular way of catching its prey. There are two groups of cetaceans. The first one is the group of the baleen whales, like the blue whale here. And then the second group is the one of the sperm whale, the group of the tooth whales, and they have such teeth. Baleen whales use huge filters called plates to trap the plankton and krill they eat. They're no threat to larger animals. But tooth species like the killer whales are hunters, and these were much more numerous 12 million years ago. The first time that we arrived in Peru, we discussed with my colleague uh, Giovanni Bianucci from the University of Pisa. What would be the great discovery uh, that could be done in Peru? Giovanni showed me some pictures of very large sperm whale teeth. They teeth were 40 centimeters long and they were found in Chile in the same layers as the ones in Peru. And so Giovanni just told me the best thing that could happen to us is to find a skull which is associated to these, to these uh, teeth. And uh, in November 2008, this is what happened. With Olivier and Giovanni were Jelly Ruma from Utrecht in the Netherlands and Mario Obina from Lima in Peru. Mario found the site and Klaus Post from Rotterdam found the specimen itself on the very last day of their trip. We realized that there was a huge skull of a tooth whale. The skull was partly broken and it was upside down. And what we have seen there immediately is huge alveoli for teeth. So it means that animal had upper dentition. So quickly we realized that it was a new animal, a new species, a new, new genus completely different from, from what we knew. And my colleague Giovanni Bianucci this, uh, proposed immediately the name Leviathan uh, because this animal was related to the sperm whale and in the, the famous uh, novel of Herman Melville, Moby Dick, the, the sperm whale is uh, often called Leviathan. Um, and then we added the, the species name Melville just in honor of uh, Herman Melville and his fantastic book. This is the skeleton of a modern sperm whale, the largest tooth whale. Our new animal from Peru has a size similar to this sperm whale, but on this new species. There were teeth also on the upper jaw, like that. Modern sperm whale's teeth seem to have no role in hunting. Rather than biting their prey, usually giant squid, they suck them into their jaws. The nature paper shows a modern sperm whale compared in size to a modern killer whale and reveals the enormous bite of Leviathan. It had teeth on the mandible and on the skull. And the teeth were like this, you know, occluding. And you had this small facet here where the tip of the lower teeth was entering. 
And it's just a, a wear facet from the, the lower teeth and the upper teeth. And it means that this animal was using its teeth not to eat squids like the recent sperm whale, but to eat big animal with skeleton. And we, Olivia and I, and Giovanni in class, we think that this animal was eating whales, baleen, small baleen whales, which were living in the locality, in the place, in the coast of Peru by the time, 12 million years ago. Even Herman Melville's Moby Dick would have lost any fight with Leviathan Melvilli from Peru. This animal was as big as a recent sperm whale, but the teeth were almost twice bigger. This tooth is about 36 centimeters long, and the diameter is 12 centimeters in diameter, which makes this animal the biggest tetrapod bite ever discovered. This is unfinished business. The paleontologists will be returning to Peru in a few months' time. What do they want to learn now? I say it's a paleontologist's paradise. And it's also a natural laboratory of evolution because you can follow beds after beds. They're just The fossils are just transforming. You see then the, the rostrum is getting longer, the teeth smaller. So it's absolutely fantastic. We hope to find more. Uh, for example, we don't have any idea of the postcranial remains, uh, the vertebral column. We don't know uh, really how long it was. The shape of the, of the flipper, we, we don't know about it. So it would be interesting to find more but also what we would like to look after is uh, ancestors of these sperm whales going deeper in the time and trying to find older uh, sperm whales. If I met one of these animals, I would be certainly frightened because he would very easily uh, eat me in maybe uh, two bites.